Hi, I'm Gloria. Have you ever sat in front of the TV or your computer or your phone, whatever it is, and watched the TV show casually and just started screaming at the main character asking, why are you like this? Why are you the way that you are? Why are you doing this to me? What if you're like me? You probably have lived with this experience multiple times. I mean, there are so many characters that are excruciating to watch. Just a few examples. Ted Mosby in How I Met Your Mother, Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and the City, um, Jane, Jane Villanueva Jane in Jane the Virgin, um, and so many others. It's going to, it's, it's a long list of unlikable main characters. And because I was watching Jane the Virgin the other day and I kept asking myself why she is so unlikable, I started noticing that, huh, she's not the only unlikable main characters I've ever come across. Authors, it's actually quite common for authors to make characters that are disgustingly unlikable. And I asked the questions, why? Why 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 are they doing this to us? Like why 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 do they make me want to peel off my skin? Because I cannot stand to watch Carrie Bradshaw pick big again and try to change him again. So I did some research and I found out that there are many reasons as to why characters are the way that they are. And at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you my top three of the characters I hate the most and why I hate them. So if you're interested in this, stay tuned and let's get right into this video. Research. Like I said before, I did some a little research, right? I went on this website called um, standout, standoutbooks.com and they gave, they gave me enough reason they give me a lot of valuable reasons as to why character ca main characters are so unlikable and it's something that authors do on purpose right and and the first reason is that we stand like Gucci, Gucci, Louis, Louis, Fendi, Fendi, Prada. people are entertained by violations so what that means is that people are entertained by, by characters when they're not doing what they're supposed to do for example in Sex of the City, when Carrie picks big for the millionth time, even though you know you're they're going to break up, you know they're not going to get married, you know, you know he's no good for her, you know she's no good for him, you know it's entertaining to watch her pick him because it's something that she shouldn't do, and because you watch something that you shouldn't do, it's entertaining for the viewer, I guess. For the same reason, you watch um, the, the the TV show You. And Joe Goldberg gets obsessed over another girl again, and it's a different one. You thought, man, he's changed. He found he's found his match. No, he didn't. He's a psychopath, and that's why it's entertaining to watch him up. So yeah, the point is, people are entertained by people breaking the rules. It's just it's just the way it is. That's why we watch TV. That's why we watch horror movies. It just makes sense. Next reason. We stand like Gucci, Gucci, Louis, Louis, Fendi, Fendi, Prada. Well, it's because it's fiction. When you're watching a TV show, you can tell yourself, oh, it's not real. It's just a TV show. It's okay if the person is doing that. Whereas in real life, it's one of your um, co-workers or your friend or your one of your family members were to kill people randomly because they um, got in the way of the person that they love, like Joe Goldberg. Um, well, you wouldn't necessarily just stay tuned, keep watching, and not sit by and... Yeah, I don't know. You just... You would just react more vividly, you would get mad at them and everything. But when it comes to a fictional character, you're okay with that because you tell yourself that it's fiction. But you wouldn't you wouldn't make it but it, it's not okay for it. But because it's fiction, it's not okay for people in real life to do it. I don't know if that makes sense, but so the next reason is that we sound like Gucci Gucci Louis Louis Fendi Fendi Prada. So the paradox as a matter of contrast. So what that means is that we enjoy fear, but we also enjoy overcoming it. As an example, we enjoy watching We. By We, I don't mean B. I do not enjoy horror movies like too. So when people watch horror movies, it they they do enjoy the fear that it brings out of them, but they also more than anything enjoy overcoming the fear, being bigger than the fear, being like, oh, it's just fiction. Or enjoy the conflict resolution where the fear is gone. <sighs> if that makes sense. So if we bring it back to TV shows that are not horror, for example, like the main character that you despise can do something really dumb and you get scared for them. You're scared that they're going to get caught in 
a bad situation, you're scared that they're going to ruin their career, you're scared that they're going to lose everything, etc, etc, like so many, so many options. So you're scared for them, but then the conflict gets resolved and you can get over your fear. That's what gets us in so invested in TV shows. They end up not losing everything or at least not, sometimes not anything actually. So yeah, that's one of the reasons. If that made sense, that, if that made any sense. So the next reason is... We sound like Gucci, Gucci, Louis, Louis, Fendi, Fendi, Prada. So the next reason is that we enjoy morally reprehensible characters because they simultaneously allow us to indulge in perversity without actually being perverse ourselves because they make us feel good by comparison. So what that means, it's a big sentence, what that means is that, um, for example, a main character does, does something really dumb, really bad. For example, getting involved in something they shouldn't and making a mess for the person that they were trying to help or making, just making a mess. They just do something bad. So we enjoy watching that because um, in a way, we feel that, oh, well, I would never do that, so I'm better in comparison. Or at the same time, we feel like, oh, yeah, I, you, in the same situation, you probably would have done that, but by watching them doing it, you don't actually have to do it yourself, if that makes sense. So by watching someone on the TV doing it, it, allow, it allows you to not do it for you, you know? For example, um, if someone get involved in something they really should not, like it's going to ruin something for the other characters, right? And so, yeah, it ruins everything and it's a big mess. So you're watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, why did you just do this? But at the same time, even though if, if you were in the same position, maybe you would have done the same thing, but by watching on TV, you get to see how it turns out and you get to see that, oh, well, in that situation, I would not have done that. I would have done better, blah, 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 blah. And so you can feel better about yourself because the character is so dumb, unlikable, made a mistake, etc. So the next reason is that we sound like Gucci, Gucci, Louis, Louis, Fendi, Fendi, Prada. Likeable characters are boring. If a character is too perfect, you and you never have anything to say about it, if they always do the right thing, I mean, it gets boring. For example, Daria in like that Daria in the show Daria from the nineties. I mean, that character she thought she was perfect. I mean. Okay, I watch. I watch. I, I watched maybe ten episodes. Every single episode, she was right. Every single one of them. And like, she did come. She did commentary on like basically social issues and everything. And like, the first like, at first it's like, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. But like, at some point, I was just like, okay, we get it. And I stopped watching because she's so like, she's she's not likable, but she's too perfect. There's nothing. There's just nothing to say about it. I mean, she's felt in the sense that she's she thinks that she's always right. But that's kind of it. Like there's no like, there like, there's nothing that's keeping me hooked for the same reason. Carly and I, Carly, she's really she's really well she's a well rounded character, but like she has almost no flaws. I mean, the only flaw she had was um, like when she fell in love with um, what Nathan Cress, his character. I I forgot his name, but it was only because he had saved her life. That was kind of her only flaw. Like she really doesn't have any laws which I mean it's fine she's still a likable character but she's kind of boring so my eye kind of always went to Sam kind of always went to Spencer kind of always went to um the mom also like I just wasn't attracted to um Carly so yeah for all those characteristics that's why characters are so unlikable now we're going to talk about the characters I hate the most. We sound like Gucci, Gucci, Louis, Louis, Fendi, Fendi, Prada. So the first character I'm going to start with is Lucas in One Tree Hill. So if you haven't watched my One Tree Hill video, you can watch it here. Um, I made it recently. It's very good. It's it's talking about One Tree Hill, not the whole show, but it's talking about one specific episode. It's pretty good, I think. So yeah, you can watch that. Um. Yeah, Lucas in One Tree Hill. He is so despicable. He's so annoying. I mean, I I watched the show when I was in elementary school. I don't know who allowed me to watch that, but I did. And I really don't know who he thinks he is. Um, for example, when 
um, Haley joined like the the cheerleaders for like one night to as a favor um, because they needed an extra girl and he like Lucas saw her in her uniform and was like wow you look ridiculous and she was just like uh, like huh huh like I'm sorry aren't you on the basketball team why is she ridiculous she actually looked pretty good in the uniform if I may say like what do you mean she looks ridiculous you you look ridiculous like what he is so just so judgmental I mean wow I mean and for someone so judgmental you you'd think he'd be a better person but he cheated on every single one of his girlfriend oh my gosh and I was about to say he didn't cheat on Peyton but the night that they broke up he wanted to sleep with her best friend so yeah my favorite character is now Dan Scott I'm sorry it's just the way it is next very unlikable character is um Ted Mosby in How I Met Your Mother. Wow, he's annoying. He is super annoying. I mean, if you watch How I Met Your Mother, um, you'll know he is romantic, but to like the next level. I mean, um, so the reasons I wrote down for as to why I don't like him, the first reason is Robin. I mean, she told him so many times that she wasn't in love with him, that she didn't want kids, that she wanted a bigger life for herself, but he kept chasing her. And even in the last episode, I know that I really understand. I understand why the writers were like, "That's that's what's supposed to happen," because that's what that's where you wanted from the beginning. It makes sense. It makes sense. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful circle, right? Like this. They started together. They end up together. It's a beautiful circle, right? But. Um, there are so many videos about this, by the way. They gave us so many reasons as to why they shouldn't be together, and they are very valuable reasons. And the next reason is, he's kind of a player. I mean... What? He... 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 He got around. He... He got around for someone talking about in basically every episode, like, Oh, yeah, I want to meet the one of, the woman of my dreams. Like, yeah, this is it. I'm meeting her. Yes, I'm not playing. I'm gonna get into a serious relationship. Mm-hmm. He really was not manifesting it. I mean, um, he did it like a lot, a lot, a lot of women. Like, it's, I'm not saying it's anything wrong, but he kept contra contradicting himself and saying that I, I want someone serious, but they then date someone serious. What are you doing being 30 dating a 20 year old? Huh? Remember that episode where he got a matchmaker and she told him, oh yeah, you have like, you're matching with this woman, but she's engaged and he went to meet her anyway And he tried propo proposing her even though she was getting married like the next day or something <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Uh, it's just he's he's just so I'm like he's just so unlikable <laughs> I can't and the last character I absolutely despise is Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and the City <laughs> I love that TV show, but wow, she was so unlikable. I finished the TV show, but trust me, it was hard. It was very hard. Like at the six, when I got to the sixth season, I was just like, I, I just need it to be over. I just need, like, please put an end to my agony because I don't like not finishing TV shows. I really like just getting, getting conclusion. I really enjoy getting a conclusion and being able to judge the entirety of the TV show, the entirety of the body of work, and be like. Overall, I liked it. Overall, I didn't like it. I overall very much loved Sex and the City, but I very much hated Carrie Bradshaw. Why? Because, um, first reason, big. <sighs> How many times do they break up and get back together? They should, they don't belong together. They do not belong together. Even in real life, they don't get together. And that's like, I understand that like when you're in love, in love like in real life, like they are, it just, the reasons don't matter and you just, end up together even though it doesn't make sense but love isn't enough right but they just they're just so toxic from one another i mean she just when she got with aiden she just cheated on him so much i mean oh, he didn't deserve and he just he didn't deserve this but she cheated on him so many times like ah he was such a good guy and he got his heart shattered oh, i feel so bad for him and then um 
yeah, she's also like so financially irresponsible. I mean, can you explain me how she invested $40,000 in shoes but didn't have enough money to pay rent? Like what? When she was having financial troubles, right? And Charlotte and Charlotte didn't offer her money and then she was like, how, how dare you not offer me money? I wouldn't have taken it, but you should have offered it to me. Like she's just so entitled. She is just so entitled. The same as Lucas Scott, the same as Ted Mosby. I mean, they're just... And all those characters, I mean, they are in very good TV shows. I mean, I very much enjoyed watching One Tree Hill. It's a great TV show. I very much enjoyed watching How Your Mother. It's very well made. I very much enjoyed watching Sex and the City. It's just, they're all good TV shows, but the main characters are all so unlikable. But it was still captivating to watch because as much as I wanted to rip my eyes out every time that Carrie got back with Big, I couldn't help but watch it. I just knew it was coming and I couldn't help but like, stay tuned and watch it if that makes sense <laughs> maybe i'm a masochist and that's why um i get into tamek tv shows like that but i did enjoy watching them even though the main characters were so unlikable anyway that's just that's just my opinion i hope that video made sense i hope you enjoyed it i hope you kind of understood why main characters are so unlikable and i hope you'll subscribe to my channel and follow me on my socials so yeah, I think that's going to be it to, for today's video. I really enjoyed making that video. Um, it was informative and I got to rant on Lucas Scott, on Ted Mosby and on Carrie Bradshaw. So that's a win-win-win. <sighs> so yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Bling, bling, bling.